Good morning. We welcome every one of you this morning, present and those that are online. We welcome you to our, our meeting this morning, celebrating the risen Christ. Amen. So why don't we stand and um, maybe we'll, we'll uh, greet one another ne next to you and uh, tell them you're welcome, especially if you see someone that is here for the first time, you welcome them with the love of Christ. And then we're going to open with prayer. Hallelujah. We welcome you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to read a couple of verses. Brother Daniel read them this morning. Brother Daniel gave the, the sunrise service, and he, he, he gave a real good message. And he, he covered some of these verses, and I would just like to read a few of them. It's, it's found in the Gospel of uh, Luke, in chapter, chapter 24. It says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they, uh, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this that behold two men stood by them in the shining garments then as they were afraid they bowed their faces to the earth. They said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? <clears throat> he is not here, but Jesus has been risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. This morning we're uh, celebrating the risen Christ. The women went in to... to uh, the tomb, and the tomb was empty. The cross is empty, and his garments are empty, but Christ is alive. And that's the full gospel. Even as the Apostle Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, this is the gospel, and we heard the gospel this morning through the preaching of Brother Daniel, how Christ has risen, he's alive, and because he's alive, we have lives to live for. And because he has risen, he lives in our hearts, and we have hope in our lives. Many people still have the Christ in the cross, but the cross is empty. The tomb is empty. And even as Daniel said this morning, <clears throat> when the ladies got there, the stone was rolled away, a heavy stone. They were thinking in their minds, how are we going to move the stone to go inside the tomb to anoint the body of Christ? But the stone had been rolled away. And I like what he said. There's a lot of times we have many problems that we cannot do nothing about it. But because he is risen, he is alive. Our faith is in him. He will roll away whatever stone you have in your life. Even this morning, if you came with certain problems, certain worries, there's nothing you can do about it except trust Jesus, who is alive, and he will move the stone away. So whatever's in your heart this morning, trust in God and tell him, Lord, remove this obstacle out of my life because I want to worship you. I want to come in with a grateful heart that you're alive. You have forgiven my sins because he died. Not because of his sins, because he's sinless. But he died because of our sins. 
And that's what we need to be grateful. And God is alive. Can I hear the man say, He's alive? I, I, we can do better than that. He's alive. Hallelujah. Do you really mean it? He's alive. He's not dead. We might be dead, but He's alive. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for what you have done. Thank you for giving your son Jesus Christ who died at the cross to shed his precious blood to wash our sins away. And we thank you that he rose again from the dead and he is very alive today in our lives. And we thank you for that, Lord, that we have that hope in our lives to give others that don't know you, to give them hope to the resurrection, Jesus Christ. Lord, bless your people this morning, those that are present and those that are still traveling. We ask it in Jesus Christ. Amen. Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son.
salvation that it brought and Lord we just pray that you have this meeting in your hands Lord bless all those who are gathered here and and those receiving this at home as well and we just lift this this day this time this morning up to you and your awesome holy name all God's people said amen amen go ahead and greet those around you
Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. This happy Resurrection Sunday. Just in case you haven't heard, that Jesus is alive. Amen. Welcome, everybody. There's a few announcements for this coming week. We had a, a really great sunrise service this morning. A lot of people were here. It was, it was wonderful. This coming Tuesday is the men's and women's Bible study, 6, 6 p.m. here at the church. So if you can make it, 6 p.m. at the church. And Wednesday night, Bible study at 7 p.m. I believe we're continuing through the life of David this coming Wednesday and then prayer Saturday. Also, today after church, there'll be sign up for men's retreat. It's going to be May 17th, 18th, and 19th. And there'll be sign ups over here with Sister Jackie. And plan on um, June 17th and 18th is going to be VBS for the kids. The theme is Growing in Jesus. Growing in Jesus. So next week, they'll start taking sign-ups for adult helpers. So if you want to help, you want to serve at VBS, um, then you'll be able to sign up next week to start doing that. Those are the announcements that we have for today. We're looking forward to the word Pastor Mike has to share. I'm going to dismiss the teachers, and let's pray as the teachers go to their class. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you that you rose from the dead. And we can have new life in Christ because of your death and resurrection, your sacrifice. We thank you, Father, for sending the Son. Lord, today we ask you to bless the kids, bless their, their classes, their teachers, help them learn a lot about Jesus, and just pray you be with them. And we pray you bless Pastor Mike today as he shares with us. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Mike. And kids, you can go to Sunday school. Praise God. The Lord is good, amen. Praise God. Well, welcome. Welcome in the name of Jesus. I don't know if they turned me off or if they just don't want me to speak. I have a big mouth. They can't stop me. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome again in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. I uh, I uh, didn't notice something being said, and we can't go a year without hearing it. We heard it earlier in the week, but and uh, I believe it was Keith Green that said it. But I think our pastor Ray made it famous. It was Jesus rose from the dead, and you couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> that was his normal sunrise service greeting. <laughs> So I felt that we lacked that a little bit this morning, so we'll, we'll give you that little extra for this morning. Um, again, welcome. Um, not to glorify uh, the church, because we gather just to rejoice in, uh, in the risen Savior, but uh, this is our 46th Easter service as a church. That's tremendous. That's God's faithfulness. That's God's hand upon this body, and, and he continues to use it, and he continues to desire to use it even more in the, in the, in the year before us. So, uh, so what, a blessed, uh, what a blessed statement that we can say that God has kept us. We don't keep ourselves. It's nothing that we've done. It's God's hand by his Holy Spirit that has kept us, so praise God. So uh, all over the world this morning, people are gathering celebrating a historic event. Not a religious holiday, but a well-documented, life-changing, supernatural event that changed the whole world. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God in the flesh, rose from the dead. It's not a religious belief. It is the truth. It is history. It is history, and we can trust in that. Um, my task this morning, to me, feels a little bit uh, overwhelming because I feel, how can I condense the whole Bible into one Easter morning service? So on that note, let's pray. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to gather in your name. We thank you for 
even this time to worship you, Lord, and even as your Holy Spirit is here moving in the midst of us, we pray, Lord, your, your Holy Spirit would continue to move through your word, that you would have your way in this place, and, and every heart represented here, and every heart at home as well, Lord. You, you minister in a special way, Father. You know what we need, and Father, we just ask that you would just have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Well, to begin with, I feel like uh, Genesis 1-1 would be a good place to start. The Word of God says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We know this to be true. We know this is a statement of fact. It cannot be refuted. People can say it was this big bang, it was this, it was that. But where did all those things come from? The Word of God is the only one with the answer to how things began. And, and, and in this we see that there was a separation that came in the garden. A separation that entered the garden through temptation where man fell. Uh, this separation brought, uh, uh, this sin brought a separation from God. And we know that Isaiah chapter 59 verses 1 and 2 are very uh, clearly stated, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you. This is the circumstance that we are in. This is a hopeless circumstance unless you have a Savior. John 14, 6 says, Jesus in his own words said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way. This is a statement of truth. This is not something that can be uh, considered an opinion because that's what the world likes to do. They like to say, well, that's your opinion. They say, that's what your thoughts are on those things. But there are certain things that, that cannot be called an opinion if they're truth. Two plus two, well, at least when I went to school, was four. And there was no other answer. That was the basic math. I think that was my graduation year. But you can't see it as anything else but that. If you call it five, it's not true. It is an incorrect answer. But in the world that we live in today, it's becoming about opinion. It's becoming about what your desire and what your thoughts and how you feel it should be answered. And, and that's taking away from the truth of the gospel. There are certain things, like I mentioned before, that, that, are, that are truth that are, cannot be moved. People will say, I'm a good person. I don't need to follow what the Bible says. Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The term good in the Bible means perfect, perfection. So when we say we're good, someone asks you, are you a good person? Natural response is, well, compared to, compared to them, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm almost great compared to them. But the word of God says good is perfect. Perfection is the bar. Perfection is something that we can't meet. So without being able to meet that perfection, to remove this sin, the Word of God says in Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Payment, the payment due for sin. That is the payment that must be made. People may say, but you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what my life has contained. How am I supposed to surrender my life to a God who let this happen to me? God is supposed to be good. How can these things happen to me? And, and, and the, the example that came to my mind is like blaming the emergency room doctor for your injury 
and you never went to the hospital. Or if you did go to the hospital and he gave you instructions and you didn't follow one of them. See, God has called us to himself. He is the only answer. He is the only doctor. Have you ever heard the term uh, black and white? There's no gray area. There's black and there's white. That's not a very popular term in the day that we live in. Uh, There was a Barna poll taken that asked the question, does truth exist? 54% said all truth is subjective and there are no moral absolutes. This means nothing is absolutely right or nothing is absolutely wrong. That's the consensus of the day. That's how people are judging the word of God. Brother Louis read in Luke chapter 24, And if you could turn there. In Luke chapter 24, we'll begin in verse 1. It says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. There, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. We hear these words throughout the Word of God. Jesus shared these constantly. It said he took the disciples aside. It says it for the second time. It says it for the third time. He continually poured into them. These things were going to happen. And it says that they would know. In John, it says that, When he rose again, they would remember. It would bring to remembrance. They would understand what happened. And in my heart, I was sharing with my wife yesterday. I said, imagine what the apostles were thinking on Saturday. Imagine where their hearts were at. They had poured everything. They had left everything behind. They said, Jesus is going to be the king. In their mind and heart, just like the others, They thought he was going to take over and remove Rome and and sit on on the throne as a king to take them out of uh, of the the persecution that they were under. And Jesus never said that. That that was why he was coming. He had much bigger reason to come for the whole world, not just for one city, not just for one area, but for you and I. So we know that Jesus came And he rose again. These are truths that we can stand upon. See, right now, even churches are are being weary of sharing specific truths of the word of God. Because they're afraid it can offend people. They're afraid that these truths are going to cause people to go away. Or worse yet, you could get a lawsuit. You'll notice in the day that we live in, it is very hard to find a church that is willing to go out of their way to marry people that are not a part of their church. Sounds like an unusual situation. But there is people in the world that are looking for reasons to come and sue the house of God because they want to have marriage in their mind what they think it is. And not what the Bible says it is. They say there's no absolute truth in that. Trusting in God is something that we must shine brightly in the midst of this dark world. We have been given a calling as believers 
to understand the truths of the gospel and to know they're unchanging. These are, these are like, like gravity, it, it, like standing on top of this roof and jumping off. What happened in your life doesn't matter. You could be an airplane pilot and put your arms out real nice. You're going to hit the ground the same way. It's not going to stop you. You can't change gravity. The word of God is truth. It is the rock solid foundation that we live our life by. We can't allow anything to rock us to the left or to the right. Because the world thinks that everything is up for judgment. Um, I had a couple of suggestions. I had a couple of, of uh, I don't want to say suggestions, but there are a, a couple of news stories that kind of struck me really. They struck me really in a place to show the condition that this world is in. Sometimes we think everything is fine because we don't see so much of the things that are going on. But the heart of man is growing darker and darker. People will say, oh, that it's always been that way. Not like the day that we're living in. There's people you can trust. Doctors. You should be able to trust doctors. I, I, I read a story about a doctor in Michigan. He was 50 years old, and he was sentenced to 45 years after misdiagnosing over 550 patients. He did this to purposely defraud insurance companies. This doctor actually administered chemotherapy to patients who didn't need it. He had gone to the top schools to learn his craft. He, he founded the largest private cancer practice in the state of New York. It says there was at least 553 victims, which added up to three, uh, $35 million in false claims. One patient that had been going to him tripped in her room on a, on a piece of luggage and broke her leg. She went to the hospital. As they were repairing her leg and doing tests, they said, you don't have cancer and you never have had cancer. And that's how all these things came to light. This doctor in court said, I permitted this sin to enter because of the power and because of greed. We go to doctors and we think, that's an absolute. That can't, there can't be anything. His, he takes an oath that says, I want to take care of and preserve life. So how can a doctor not be trustworthy? I'm not trying to poke a hole in, in, in medicine. I'm just saying this world is not the place that we think it is at times. Things are growing darker. But the world is still seeing things as ro with rose-colored glasses on. It's just the way you look at it. It's just the way uh, their, their truth is, is one way. Well, that's just one field. I read another story, and I was very hesitant to share this. But it just, it just punched me in the stomach, and I just couldn't understand in my mind the thought process that some people have in the midst of this world. It was an Ohio mother who had a 16-year-old, excuse me, 16-month-old toddler, left this toddler in a playpen. Well, she went on vacation to Puerto Rico for 10 days. She left a few bottles in the, in the playpen and left. They have her on, on, on video, security video, how she 
left carrying her suitcase, how she met her male friend and they flew to Puerto Rico, how she took pictures on the beach to put on social media while her child starved. You think a mother, the love of a mother cannot be, cannot go south, cannot be tested in that manner. The woman came home to find her child had passed. So she washed and changed the child, called 911 and cried and said, my child is sick and dying and needs help. They came and obviously they could tell that that was not the case. The officers were talking about the worst. They said they had never anything, comp it was nothing they could compare to the situation. And right now you're saying, what a wonderful Easter message that you're giving us. But what I'm trying to show is the heart of this world is dark. We have the light. We have the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We have been given this. And the world is empty. And we're following what they are directing us to do. We end up coming under so many of these things because we just want to blend in. This woman in court said, I'm not trying to justify my actions, but nobody knew how much I was suffering and what I was going through. She said this about her childhood, who had died because she left her to suffer alone. And her last comments to the judge, and the judge just let her have it. And the last comments to the judge was, I pray and I know God forgave me and so does my daughter. Self. How evil can the heart of man become? We can't even comprehend it. But we have truth. We have understanding that the enemy is out there. The prince of the power of the air is in control of the things of this world. And people hear that and they go, that's too crazy. That's too weird. You know, I'll go to church and I'll celebrate and I'll rejoice in the risen Savior. But I'm not going to look at how things are going. And I'm not going to look at what happened on Friday. Because what was mentioned on Friday was the cross, the payment. Without the cross, there's no resurrection. Without the resurrection, the cross is empty. It doesn't mean anything. But together, it is the power for eternal life. And we have that given to us. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and Brother Louis made a reference to it. The Apostle Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. In chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which you also, by which also you are saved. And then the next line is very key. If you hold fast, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered to you first of all that which I have received. And that is the key portion if any time we're reading the Word of God, any time we're sharing the Word of God, it is not what we think or what our opinion is. It's what the truth of the Bible says. Then we can stand behind it. He says, what I got, I'm giving you, which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, 
and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. According to the word of God. The word of God is truth. The word of God is the granite that we stand upon, that rock that we stand upon. We must trust the word of God. We even heard that this morning about trust and how it's not easy to trust. But this is the truth. There is nothing that can shake it. It says in verse 5, and that he was seen by, uh, by, by Cephas and by the twelve, and after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom a great part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. This is historic. It's history. It's not just a word in a book that a religion believes and follows. You can get other religions and books and they talk about different things that are make-believe. They talk about uh, glasses that make you see invisible ink and they talk about all these different things that are not according to Scripture. This is the truth of the gospel. He came because we needed saving. We need a Savior. If we don't understand that this morning, that we need salvation, and we think we can do it on our own, then we're telling Jesus, you died on a cross for no reason. I don't need you. I'm good enough. But as I said before, the Bible says good is perfection. And none of us are that. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's what the Word of God says. So understanding first and foremost that we need to be saved. Everyone. It's not a matter of who's good or who's bad or what happened in your life or what's going on in your life. This is a biblical truth that is stone. We need to be saved. How can we be saved? There is only one way. Someone must pay the cost. Uh, the, the, the thought comes to mind of, say you are uh, uh, a Michigan fan. And I apologize, I fall into sports a lot, but that's kind of what happens in this head. Michigan, go big blue. That's your team. That's your school. And you love that school, and you're telling everybody how much uh, you can't wait for graduation, and you've got bumper stickers all over your car, and it's a tremendous, everybody, it's, every time they see you, you're wearing the, your Michigan shirt or jersey, and you're always talking about how great it is. And then graduation day comes. And you show up to the ceremony, but you don't attend the school. But I like it. I'm around it. I always talk about it. I'm there all the time at every game. I'm rooting the team on. And they'll look in the books and say, in the records, have you, have you, what does it cost? There's a requirement. You have to have a GPA of this much. Well, there, there went my turn. <laughs> you have to be able to pay this amount of cost to be able to go. You know what? You don't have to pay it, but someone does. Someone has to pay that cost in order for you to graduate, to receive that diploma, to receive that crown. Someone must pay a cost. We can't just assume that it's going to happen. I'm good enough. Everything's fine. I'll ride this out, and then when the ceremony comes, I'm going to walk up there proud, and what's going to happen? Depart from me. I never knew you and cast out into darkness where weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what the world has to look forward to. Paul is telling the church at Corinth that these things that you stand in, the gospel that you stand in, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you unless you believed in vain. See, we could really have been on fire a long time ago. We could really have been serving God with all our hearts when we were younger. And now, uh, I still have it. I still love the Lord. We still have that special relationship. Good luck on graduation day. Are you prepared to hear what, what you're going to hear? Because the word of God tells us as we stray from that. But the gospel is free. It doesn't cost anything. That's exactly correct. We are saved by grace. Through faith. 
We don't have to pay anything. Jesus paid it all, but it changes us. You want to get married? That's fine. It's not going to cost you anything, except a lot for a wedding. But besides that, it's not going to cost you anything. Because I love her and I want to marry her. I love him and I want to marry him. I'm saying it for a woman, not for me. (laughs) But my actions must change. If I'm going to be married now, there's going to be a difference in how I carry myself. Am I going to be doing the same things that maybe I used to do? If you used to be out hanging out with the guys all hours of the night doing this and that and all those things, well, well, I never, I never said, marriage never said it was going to cost me anything. Well, that shouldn't cost you because you made a choice, a decision, and you chose that this decision was better than anything else that you've ever had. And you're going to dedicate yourself to that because it is. And I do say that about marriage as well because I'm very blessed. But it's not a burden to give these things up. Just like when we serve God and we receive him as Lord and Savior, it's not a burden to do things unto the Lord because he blesses us. He strengthens us. He carries us through. We can run to the foot of the cross. As long as we hold tight, hold fast, do not let go of the word. In the day that we live in, even the church is letting go of the word. You have people that are reading the Bible and removing portions because they say, well, that was more about uh, the cultural or that was more. You can't make that decision. You're not God. The word of God is perfect. Put together by the Holy Spirit. And we are to receive it and walk in it. And as we do that, our life will shine for him. And it doesn't matter what we go through. We're all going to have, my, my tongue is stuck in my mouth here. <laughs> my go through, I sound like I'm with fun. I'm sorry, I get all excited and then my mouth dries up. But we have a Savior that has paid a cost and all we have to do is receive it. All we have to do is receive it and understand the day that we live in is only growing darker. We need to run to the foot of the cross. If we this morning know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we should be willing to walk with him. We can't walk from a distance. We can't pretend like we're going to graduate. We can't pretend like we're going to school there. I've said this before, we can come to church every Sunday and stand in the back parking lot in a stall and we'll come into church and sit in a chair and turn into a Christian. We have to apply ourselves. We have to be willing to understand. And that's what Friday was all about. Understanding what was paid for you. How do you hold something of value? If you have something that just is an extreme high amount of value, this, this, this priceless Ming vase, vase, whatever they call them, right? Would you let your toddler play around in the house with it? Walk around with it, spin it around, put toys in there. It's worth $3 million. No, you put it in glass and you put a spotlight on it. And you tell everybody, look at that, $3 million. <laughs> I'm being facetious, but when something costs something, you take care of it. When we understand the price that was paid for you and I on Friday for an innocent Jesus who did not sin, who did nothing wrong, who was perfect in our behalf and says, I'll take it for you. And then we take that communion in remembrance of what he did. And we remember that cross. And it moves our heart. And it's supposed to. Because when you understand the price that was paid for you, for you alone, that's how much Jesus loved you. That if you were the only person on this earth, he would have came and died on a cross for you. We must see that, understand it, and walk in it. And only then do we rejoice that he is risen. Because that is our salvation. That's what we have before us. Rejoicing in eternity, walking on streets of gold with our Savior. 
and with all the believers that went before us. We all have a hole in our heart from different losses in our life. And, and so many who were on fire for God and the Lord, even as a part of this work, has taken home. But we will see them again. And we will see our Savior. He's given us this opportunity. Rejoice in the day that he's given us. Rejoice in the risen Savior. But make sure you understand the cost of rejoicing. Because it comes at a cost. The Word of God says, count the cost. He said, if you're going to go into battle, you're going to count your men. If you're going to build, you're going to see that you have the amount of finances so you don't just lay down the foundation and are unable to build and you're mocked and laughed at is what the scripture says. Understand, there is a cost. But the cost outweighs anything that we could ever imagine because even our mind and heart, we can't even comprehend the goodness of God. We can't even comprehend what is in store for us in eternity. Not to mention how he goes before us in this life. I apologize if these stories that I shared and, and some of the, the words that came from my heart may make you feel downhearted or discouraged in looking at the things of the world, but they should make us look with more excitement to the things of God. Because he has won the battle. The victory is ours in Jesus Christ. The fight is over. We are the victors in Christ. We just must go forward in it. Amen? So with that, I'm going to ask you to stand. We have an opportunity this morning. We have an opportunity to to renew a walk with the Lord. We have an opportunity to lay down our life and receive him as Lord and Savior. If we've never prayed to ask him into our heart, we have that opportunity to know that we know where we're going. Others of us, we're going to see brethren, we're going to see family, we're going to see others that who don't know the Lord, even later today. If you want to pray for that open door and ask God to, to fill your mouth with his words by his Holy Spirit, allow him to use you as a tool in his hand. We can pray that way. We're going to, we're going to open the altar. I'm going to call the musicians forward. And as the musicians come forward, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. And we're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the cross. Father, though this is a, a heavy, heavy cross, Lord, that you sacrificed everything, that you were beaten beyond recognition, the Word of God says, that you bled and died in our place, for that was the cost of sin. Yet, Father, you took these things through the blood of your son. And we ask right now, Lord, that you would renew our hearts. That you would help us to rejoice in this day you've given us, but for the right reasons, with understanding, Lord. Not just to be happy that you rose, but to understand the price you paid at that cross. And how much you love your people. You love us, Lord. Help everyone in this place and even online at home know how much you love them, Lord. And how much you desire to, to even guide their steps, Lord, to go before them. Have your way, Lord, even in this time of prayer and this time of altar call. We thank you. We give you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask the leaders to come forward. As the leaders come forward, the altar is open. Please take advantage of this opportunity. Come, we'll, we'll pray with you in agreement. The Lord is good. His Holy Spirit is here. Receive the salvation He desires for you. Praise God.
gets to go Behold the man upon the cross My sin upon his shoulder Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scars Thank you, Pastor Mike. Thank you for the word. I believe the word came to us in such a way that it touches our heart. Those areas that no one sees, but God sees your heart. He goes in those areas of your heart deep down inside. Praise the Lord. It says here, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. Hallelujah. We heard that today. Praise the Lord. 
Then it says here, it says that, uh, it says, uh, it says, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generation, but now has been revealed to his saints. We are his saints. And to them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles. We are Gentiles. Which is what? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. God's hope of glory in us. God gave that to us. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done. Lord, come. Come to your people, Lord. Come here and make your home with us. Our desire is that you come, Father. Lord, we need you more today than yesterday. Thank you, Jesus, for all you're doing and going to do in our doing, Lord. You're the God we look to. You're the one who said you're coming for us and that we're going home to you. And that will be the beginning of all things for us. Yes, Jesus, we believe in you. You are risen. You have risen, Lord. Indeed, you are risen from the grave. And we believe on you. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way amongst your people, Lord. Here are your people, your daughters and your sons, Father. Do the work that you receive all the honor and all the glory, Lord. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. Bless your people, Lord. Remember your children. Remember your people. Remember your promises, Lord. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your people. Praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. Praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. Praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters my enemies drown in. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise.
Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise